Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. We are in the all-star break here in year number three. We're going to go up to the trade deadline today as well, so it's going to be a pretty busy episode. Through the first half of the season, we're 53-44, and 44, which in principle isn't too bad. We're the number one wild card in the American League, but we haven't been playing all that well lately. We're under 500 since the start of May, and although the AL wildcard race is weak, some teams are really starting to heat up. The Blue Jays and Tigers have both won six in a row, so we've really got to have a good start to the second half of the season, or else we're going to have to make some tough decisions on if we want to buy during this year's trade deadline or possibly sell. So we've really got to figure out what the approach is. But the first half of this episode is going to be more so just fun because it is the All-Star break, a stress-free set of few days for some of our young stars to show what they can do. So we start with the Rising Stars game. We have a couple players here on the roster, including relief pitcher Umberto Guzman, who's having a actually really bad season in double A, but he still is there anyway. And then look at the top of the order, one and two, Zane Rowley and Alvaro Pena, both on the team. Rowley's having a great season in triple A. If he keeps this up, he's gonna get called up at some point during this season. As for Alvaro Pena, our first round pick last year, he's had a very solid season in double A with the Akron Rubber Ducks. He's probably still a year or two away from being a big leaguer, but I think overall it's been a positive first season for him in our organization. Other than those two and Guzman, those are the only three players we have on the roster. So ultimately, I decided to do a player lock with Zane Rowley. Here's the National League roster, by the way. Quite a few international subscriber made free agents in here, so maybe you may notice that your player, who you made, is on the list. International free agency for this season, as I've said, will be sometime in August of this season. Normally, I do it a little bit earlier, but I've been super busy with other series. So I haven't had time to make all the players. So we're going to hop in here with Zane Rowley as our player lock, continue to get a feel for his swing because, well, he's going to be in the big leagues quite, quite soon. So here we go, the National League and American League Futures game here in Oakland, the home of the 2024 All-Star festivities. Yeah, Oakland of all places, kind of weird. Here's your pitching matchup, Mariano Perez of the A's against Omar Acevedo of the Rockies. Zane Rowley swings at the first pitch here in the bottom of the first, hits it pretty well but it's caught by the right fielder, Ken Hawkins. Rowley does not have great power, but he's a phenomenal contact hitter as the bases are loaded here in the bottom of the second. Tied at one for Rowley, 1-1 one, one pitch, and he's going to hit this one down the left field line and fair little oppo taco, two-run single for Zane Rowley. Really good swing there. He can hit to all fields, and he drove in two runs to put the American League ahead, 3-1. to one. That'll bring up his future Cleveland teammate, Alvaro Pena, Hopefully we see Pena behind Rowley in many Cleveland Guardian batting orders in years to come. 1-2 count, 2 away here for Pena. Pitch on its way from Acevedo. Rowley with a pretty big lead, and Pena's going to hit this one nicely. That one is grounded to short, flips it over to second to get the out. But a pretty productive inning for the American League. Zane Rowley drives in two off of a big single, and the AL leads 3-1. Bottom of the third, the American League is dominating right now. It's 6-2, to two. Three one count for Rowley, he draws a walk. Yes, it's okay to draw walks in All-Star games. So the bases are loaded again. Another big opportunity here for Alvaro Pena, who hasn't really done much of anything yet. Has a 2-2 count with the bases loaded. Ryan Pepio on the mound for the National League. He's a little bit intimidated by Zane Rowley's speed, so Rowley's going to have to retreat back to first. It's not like Zane Rowley can steal here if the base is loaded, but he wants to get a big lead. He wants to tease the pitcher a little bit, and he is really playing mind games right now with Ryan Pepio. Clearly, Pepio's had a pretty bad inning, so I guess that's why Zane Rowley's trying to get into his head, and it's clearly working. Three times in a row, Pepio has to step off the mound. He seems quite intimidated by Zane Rowley, who's going to keep taking a big lead. Eventually, Pepio finally throws a goddamn pitch. And Pena lines out to third. Pretty solid inning there. The American League scored three more runs, and it is now 6-2. to two. Yeah, we got some defense as well. Defense is important too, as this one is going into right center, and it's caught! What a play by Zane Rowley, diving to make the play. Rowley is not some incredible defender. He has a pretty weak arm, but makes a highlight play there. And then here in the bottom of the fifth, he's going to hit this one pretty nicely into center, but it is going to be caught. 
That would be Zane Rowley's last at bat. He would be substituted in the seventh inning by a pinch hitter, Gilberto Jimenez. So that means Rowley's day is done. One for three, two RBIs, and a walk. Not too bad. Pretty productive as the American League takes home the Futures game this year over the National League by a final score of three to six. Look at the player at the game. It's Umberto Guzman from our organization. I have no clue why he was in the game for three innings, but maybe he's more of a long reliever than a closer. I don't know. That'll bring us to the Home Run Derby, where our very own Fran Mel Reyes will come in as the number four overall seed. Reyes won the Home Run Derby last year in Seattle, so he gets an opportunity to reclaim his throne. In the first two seasons of this series, we have had the Home Run Derby champion. In year one, it was Jose Ramirez in Los Angeles. Last year, of course, Framiel Reyes won it in Seattle. So now he's looking to do it here in Oakland and make it three consecutive seasons that a Cleveland Guardians player has won the Home Run Derby. Since the name change, the Guardians have never not had somebody win a Home Run Derby, so we're hoping that Fran Mill Reyes can keep it going. Reyes, of course, it is an impending free agent in the offseason, and if we continue our losing skid, who knows what his future is here. However, hopefully he can win it here tonight, representing our organization against Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who hit 19 in the first round as the 5 seed. That's going to be a pretty high mark to beat. I noticed pretty early on this pitcher was throwing really slowly, which can be good and bad. It can be good because Reyes can get into a nice rhythm. He can consistently hit the ball over the fence. But the problem with that is if all of the pitches are super slow, then Reyes is going to have less pitches than everybody else. So that really could hurt his total. But so far, it's not proven to be an issue. He's at 10 home runs. He's currently on pace to beat Vlad's number. Albeit not by a lot as we're halfway done this first round. Reyes now sits at 12. This one goes in the opposite field and just out of play. He does not have a home run above 440 feet. I think if he can get that bonus time, that would really help him out as he needs five within the next minute. It's going to be really close as he calls a timeout with a minute to go. He needs four to tie and five to win as he's greeted by his American League teammates, including his Cleveland teammate, Cattell Marte. There's 16. Is this 17? Yes, it is. Two to tie, three to win as he swings and misses. This for 18 is short. He's got to pick it up. He's only going to have probably two more pitches. This one for the tie. No good. This is it. Game on the line. Bang! It goes over the fence. And we are tied at 19. So it looks like we might have an overtime between Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Brand Mill Reyes. It's going to be a 60-second swing off if it remains tied then each player will get three swings. Kind of like what happened in the 2019 Home Run Derby when Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Jock Peterson had that epic round in Cleveland. Vlad's doing pretty well. Can he get five? Yes, he does. Fred Mel Reyes had around five home runs per minute in his first round. So again, this is going to be very, very close. It's almost 10 pitches per second as Reyes is doing pretty well. He's on pace. He's at three. Is that four? Yes, it is. He's been perfect so far. Can he get another one? Yes, he does. Four will win. But Franimal, Fran Mill Reyes is moving on. He saw six pitches in that second round, and they all went over the fence. So Reyes beats Vladimir Guerrero Jr. via the tiebreaker, and he will meet up against Big Meat Pete in the second round. On the other side of the bracket, Joey Gallo and Nolan Arenado will play in the second round as they defeated Bryce Harper and Aaron Judge. So Reyes has to go first with Pete Alonso being the highest seed. Alonso has hit more home runs than anybody in the big leagues this year, and we know Pete Alonso lives for the home run derby. He won it a few years ago back in Cleveland. Reyes is doing pretty well so far. Again, it's around six pitches per minute, and Reyes is hitting around five home runs per minute. That's a pretty good mark for Reyes, but you like a pitch more than every 10 seconds, ideally. Reyes at 7, looking for 8. He's starting to slow down a little bit as he's not really gotten off to a great start here in the second round. Might need to use that timeout sooner than later as he goes towards the opposite field. 10 home runs with a little bit under 2 to go. He finally calls his timeout. Still does not have a home run above 440. That one went 436, his longest of the night. But he's really not having that strong in the second round. There's 440. This one goes 442, and just like that, he's unlocked bonus time. That's a huge momentum boost for Fran Mill Reyes, who did not have any 440-plus home runs throughout the entire derby up to that point, and he just got two back-to-back -back as he's really starting to heat up. There's 18. This could be 19, not quite, 
One more pitch. Reyes sends it into center field. He's actually going to get another one. And that baby is gone. 20 home runs for Reyes before the 30 seconds of bonus time. So he's got another opportunity to add some more. Reyes kind of started this round off slowly, but now he's looking at a really good number. 23? Yeah, that's a really hard number to beat. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Pete Alonso. What is his final score? 17. So Reyes doesn't even need the bonus time. He's going into the final round against Joey Gallo of the Detroit Tigers. Reyes is the higher seed, so he will kick it off. Can the Guardians have a home run derby winner for the third straight season, or will their rivals, the Detroit Tigers, get a representative as Reyes looks at his first pitch of the night? He's swinging at pretty much everything, but I noticed in this last round to start things off, a lot of these pitches are low or to the outside. Pitchers not really giving Reyes consistent pitches to start off, but it doesn't really matter. That one ran right down the middle. Reyes didn't hit it that well. But now he's starting to get into a little bit of a groove. There's eight. That one not going to be nine. He's had a lot of line drives in this last round. Seems like he's a little bit gassed at the moment. And now he's just really starting to not look good as he calls a timeout. Hopefully that can re-energize him a little bit as he's currently at 11. Does not have a home run above 440. His only homers to go at least 440 feet came in the last round. The two back-to-back -back shots. Still at 13 with a minute to go. He's got to have a strong final minute, or else I think Joey Gallo can really beat him. The big hitting lefty. Reyes at 15. This one could be 16. It is. There's 17. That one's gone. He's probably going to get two more pitches if he's lucky. That's 18, 442 at the buzzer. And that's 19. Reyes will unfortunately not get the bonus time as he is congratulated by his Cleveland teammate, Cattell Marte, and others. So here we go. Can Joey Gallo do it? He's at 15 home runs with 10 seconds to go. This is not going to happen for Gallo. As he finishes off with 16, him and Reyes shake hands. And Fernando Reyes has won back-to-back -back home run derbies. So far in all three seasons of this series, we've had the home run derby winner. Ever since the Cleveland Guardians entered the major leagues, they have had the home run derby winner on their roster. Pretty cool stuff. So Fran Mil Reyes wins the Home Run Derby. That'll bring us to the All-Star Game itself, which, in my opinion, is by far the best All-Star Game in all of the major sports. We ended up getting a trade offer from the Giants. They want to give us Robert Gisellman for Milan Tolentino. I like the idea, but Gisellman is an ERA in the fives. If it started with a three, then maybe I'd do it. We have four All-Stars this year, including Shane Bieber. Very well-deserved. He won the Cy Young last year, and it's been even better this year. Camilo Duvall, first time All-Star out of the bullpen. I think relative to his innings pitched, he's been maybe the best reliever in baseball this season. That's how good Duvall has been. Emmanuel Classe is back. He's having his worst season of the series, but is still maybe the best closer in the league. And then Cattell Marte is also in with an OPS above 1,000. Very well deserved. Here are the rest of the All-Stars, starting with the American League. Overall, I thought there were a few players on our roster who may have deserved it. Josh Bell, Jose Ramirez, and Fran Mel Reyes all had cases to get in. I get it. I mean, it's not like any of those guys have been great. Reyes has taken a small step down. Ramirez is barely hitting 250. And Josh Bell probably should have made it, but I guess he's not a great defender at first base. So at least could tell Marte and the three pitchers made it because I think those four players have been the four best players on the roster this year. And then here is the National League All-Stars as well. So here we go. The 2024 Major League Baseball All-Star Game at the Oak Hill Coliseum in Oakland, California. Is this Oakland's farewell before they inevitably move to Las Vegas? The Major Leagues wanted to get them an All-Star weekend. Maybe see how the fans would respond to try to figure out if keeping a team in Oakland is best for the MLB. So here we go. Let's get this show on the road. The starting pitching matchup today is Noah Syndergaard from the Angels against uh, Jack Flaherty from the Cubs as Cedric Mullins leads off the game with a home run. That was fast. So the National League is on the board 1-0. Cattell Marte hitting in the two slot as the designated hitter. He's up here in the bottom of the first against Flaherty. Strikes out of the high fastball. Count was full. He shouldn't have swung at that pitch, but it's the All-Star game. It happens. Hopefully the offense can respond here with runners on base, and they would not. So we go into the second inning. Good inning from Cindergaard into the bottom half of the inning. Can the offense get something going? Bregman reaches off of an error. Not going to happen. Flaherty with two scoreless. We're going to start putting the substitutions in, at least with the pitcher. Shohei Otani will pitch the third. I think Shane Bieber's going to pitch the fourth. 
as they get a solo home run from Ozzy Albies. Not ideal. Shohei not having his best day on the mound, but he will get out of it as we go into the bottom half of the inning. Brandon Woodruff is in for the National League as Bo Bichette leads the inning off with a single. Count is full again for Cattell Marte. This time he draws a walk. Again, it's okay to draw a walk in an all-star game. Woodruff allows his first two batters to score, and that would prove to be a mistake. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. takes a three-run shot, and it's 3-2. to two. In a fourth inning, Shane Bieber will enter the game. I think he should have started in the All-Star game, but, I mean, hey, at least he's here. His first batter is Mr. P.E.D.'s, Fernando Tatis Jr., who goes down on the fastball. Didn't look like there was any steroid in that swing. That'll bring up Jesse Winker of the Cincinnati Reds. Yes, he is back with the Reds as he hits the shift perfectly for a double. Would have been a ground out if not for the shift, but Winker finds himself on second base. He can hit to all fields, clearly. That's why he's an all-star, right? So Winker is in scoring position. That'll bring up big meat Pete Alonso, who goes down on the fastball. Nice pitch there from Shane Bieber. Now against the third baseman, Austin Riley. He strikes out as well. Shane Bieber strikes out three batters in the inning. He does allow a double, but it's not going to matter as Winker doesn't score. Zach Wheeler is now in for the National League. In all five of Wheeler's seasons with the Phillies, he's had a sub-3 ERA. Pretty damn good. He hasn't gotten off to a pretty damn good start here as he's allowed the bases to get loaded for Cattell Marte with one away. Marte hits this one high and deep in a right center field at that track at the wall. It's caught. It will be a sacrifice fly, however, run scores. So still a productive at that is a run scores, and it's now 4-2. to That was Alex Bregman of the Astros who was driven in, and the American League leads 7-2 to now after a three-run homer by another Astro, and you're Don Alvarez. Wheeler doesn't even make it out of the inning. He would have to be replaced by Brent Suter. From there, we're going to see more different pitchers come in. Here is Luis Severino in for the American League. Gets through the inning pretty easily. Then Aaron Judge with it, a home run. It's now 8-2. Suter allows a three-run shot to Bo Bichette. And now it's 11-2 as Drew Pomeranz comes in. He is a lefty. And that's good news for the first batter of the inning. Can tell Marte because he rakes against lefties. Marte hits it high in the air into left. But it is caught. Another big inning for the American League who always seems to win the All-Star game every year. And bearing something crazy, I don't think that's going to be too different this year. Into the sixth inning, Kevin Gosman of the Blue Jays is in the game. He would allow an RBI double as Tatis would score. However, Jesse Winker would be thrown out trying to go home. So it's 11 to 3. We're going to start putting a lot of the pinch hitters into the game because I want everybody on the roster to get an opportunity to play. So Gallo comes in, Sheldon Noose comes in. Uh, in for Jose Altuve will be Marcus Simeon and so on and so forth. Noose and Simeon both walk. That'll lead to a big opportunity for Kyle Tucker. He strikes out, so if two away, an even bigger opportunity for Ian Happ, and he strikes out as well. Into the seventh inning now, we're going to have um, Josh Hader come into the game of the Baltimore Orioles, and he would allow a few flyouts. Now the National League is starting to put in their pinch hitters as we go to the bottom half of the inning. In for Bragman will be Bobby Witt Jr. I assume he can play third base in the game because he plays third base in real life. In for Corey Lee will be Pirates franchise legend Francisco Mejia. And then for Bichette, it'll be Ramon Urias. Into the eighth inning now. Two more innings to go. We've got two of our pitchers in the bullpen, so why not use them for the eighth and the ninth inning? Camilo Duvall will pitch here in the eighth as he faces off against C.J. Crone, now of the Diamondbacks. And he goes down on the slider for the first out of the inning. Brendan Rodgers grounds it to third. Bobby Witt Jr. will make the play. I know we don't like the Royals in this series, but... Bobby Witt's a pretty good player. Two away now for Mookie Betts of the Dodgers. He's going to fly this one into center. Should be caught by Ian Happ, and that will get Duvall out of the inning. A 1-2-3 frame for the first time All-Star. Duvall, who struck out one. He looked pretty good against baseball's best. Christian Vasquez will replace Cattell Barte. Only a couple more guys left on the bench. Ryan Mountcastle will go in for Gallo. And then Ty France will go in for Sheldon Deuce. It kind of worked out perfectly. Everybody's playing at a position that they can actually play. Going into the ninth inning, Emmanuel Classe will come into the game as he looks to finish it off. First against Paul Goldschmidt, who flies into center. Caught by Ian Happ. That's out number one. Two more for the American League, and they'll get their, like, 50th straight All-Star win. As this time, it's Austin Riley, who goes down on the fastball. 
Final chance for the National League Gold Stars is going to be Ozzy Albies. He homered earlier. This one hit pretty well into right, but it should be caught by the diamond fielder, Kyle Tucker. And the American League wins the 2024 Midsummer Classic in dominant fashion, 11-3. A big win for the AL. Our players did pretty well. Cattell Marte went 0 for 2 with a sack fly and a walk. And then Shane Bieber, Camilo Duvall, and Emmanuel Classe allowed a combined total of one base runner. Bo Bichette went two for three with a three-run blast, as did Jordan Alvarez. They ended up giving the game's MVP to Bichette because ultimately he, I think, ended up scoring more runs. So Bo Bichette is the 2024 All-Star Game MVP. Shohei Otani gets the win, and Brandon Woodruff gets the loss. Let's look at the minor league All-Star rosters real quick, and then we'll get back to the major league stuff. The AA team, unfortunately, lost the All-Star Game 6-4. The only pitcher we ended up having in the game was R.D. McKay, one of our relievers. Aaron Brocco made it, along with former Akron Rubber Duck, uh, Carson Tucker. Alvaro Pena and John Kenzie Noel both got in as well. Kevin Alcantara and Robert Hassel both made it in the outfield, so I believe that's six total players on the AA roster, although I think the AA All-Star rosters are a little bit bigger than AAA and the majors. The AAA team lost 11-10, despite having our very own Xavion Curry start in the game. Curry has the lowest potential of any of our AAA starters, but maybe he deserves a call-up to the big leagues with how good he has been playing. Unfortunately, none of our offensive players other than Zane Rowley got in. Good to see Rowley getting recognized. Ramon Ramiro could have had a shot at it as well had he not been called up. So going into the second half of the season, I think the name to really watch here is Ramon Ramiro. He was called up around a month ago. And he, his numbers aren't that impressive, but over the past 10 to 15 games, he's been really, really good. He started off pretty slowly, but he's hit, been hitting the ball a lot better as of recent. He has an OPS at 760, but in the last 10 games, that has to be somewhere between 900 and 1,000. He's really starting to hit the ball well. He's hitting for decent enough power. He's getting on base quite a bit with walks. So I'm very confident that Ramiro is going to continue to play well and keep that starting second base job for hopefully the next decade plus. As for the pitching, nothing overly new here. If we were to buy at the deadline, don't be surprised to see us go out and get starting pitching. Our starters have been a little bit inconsistent this year. Maybe we look for another bullpen arm as well. But we've got to figure out if that's the direction we want to go with. Luckily, we do not play against anybody over 500 before the trade deadline. We had the Red Sox, the Rangers, the Orioles, and the Royals. I simulated the first two series. We went 3-3. Three and three. Not great. I would have liked to have won four or five games, especially considering those games were all at home against inferior opponents. So we're going to play this first game here against the Baltimore Orioles of a four-game set in Camden Yards. Should bring back some fun memories of our Baltimore Orioles franchise last year. I don't think we've played against the Orioles at all in this series, so it's nice to see them again. Unfortunately for them, they do not have Louis St. John on their roster, and thus they are a lot worse than they were during the actual series. Here's a look at both lineups. Luis Campusano getting the day off along with Manuel Margot, Eliezer Alfonso, and Andres Jimenez both starting today. Aaron Daco is on the mound for the Orioles. He was a subscriber made international free agent. He was actually signed by the Rangers, traded to Baltimore in the John Means deal a couple of seasons ago. And he's been okay. He hasn't been great, but I wouldn't say he's been bad either. As he faces off against Jesus Sanchez, who hits this one nicely. In the center right field, that's not correct. Right center field with a nice bat flip as well for his 19th home run of the year. And the Guardians lead 1-0. Jesus Sanchez really looked like an all-star the first couple months of the season. Kind of fell onto a slump the past month or so. But he has still been quite solid this year. There's Jose Ramirez going down on the circle change way out of the zone. That was a filthy pitch from Aaron Daco. That'll bring up Josh Bell hitting 304. Hits this one nicely into the left center gap. That maybe could have been a home run if not for the fence being moved back. The fence was not like that last year in MLB The Show 21. That's a new change to Camden Yards. I wonder how many less home runs Louis St. John would have hit with the new fence. Hopefully he still would have had over 1,000 for his career as Fran Mel Reyes strikes out. That'll end the inning. Pretty good start for Cleveland. They do get one off the home run by Jesus Sanchez. It'll be Tristan McKenzie on the bump for the Guardians. He's been very inconsistent this year. He's had a lot of good starts, and he's had a lot of bad starts. There's been really no in-between with him. As he strikes out the leadoff batter, Ali Booker, the young shortstop. The Orioles have a lot of subscriber international free agents, such as Ali Booker. Here's Colton Cowser, the former top five pick out of Sam Houston State. 
goes down swinging. Another nice pitch by McKenzie as we go into the second. The rookie catcher, Eliezer Alfonso, hits this one down the opposite field line. He thinks about going two, but will wisely retreat back to first. So with two away, that'll bring up Andres Jimenez, who is not in a great season, but he has done a little bit better with playing less. However, he swings and misses at a pitch in the dirt, which, well, you shouldn't really do that. So Daco gets through the second inning with pretty much no problem. Still one nothing going into the bottom half of the inning as Ryan Mountcastle hits this one nicely in a straightaway center field for a base hit. So Baltimore starts the inning with a runner aboard. We'll see if they can do anything with it. As that'll bring up Adley Rochman with Mountcastle stealing second. Not even close. He is gunned down by the rookie Alfonso. Part-time ball player, full-time sniper. Mountcastle's fast enough, but yeah, Marte was ready to apply the tag and everything well before Mountcastle made it to second. Drew Waters grounds at the third. What a play by Ramirez. He's out of there. What a great defense in that inning by the Guardians with the Alfonso throw. And Jose Ramirez diving to get that one, throwing that ball from his rear end. What a play by J. Rand. The Cleveland defense making some plays as we go to the third. Jose Ramirez up the bat. He strikes out again. Aaron Dacos looked pretty good today. Minus the home run from Jesus Sanchez. The Cleveland offense hasn't been very impressive, but unfortunately for Daco, he hasn't really gotten any run support with Tristan McKenzie playing really well, too. Josh Bell leads off the fourth, hits this one nicely into center, and it goes off the top of the wall. Nearly a home run. It just barely stays in the ballpark, and that'll be a no-out double for Josh Bell, who has a pair of two-baggers in this game. And so that'll bring up Fran Mill Reyes to the plate. He draws a walk. Good at bat, good discipline. So that means there are now two runners on base and nobody out for the Union. Ramon Ramiro, who's going to hit this one nicely into the right center gap for a base hit. Runner will score. Reyes advances to third. An RBI single for Ramon Ramiro, who's continuing to hit the ball at a high level. And it is now 2 to nothing. Good swing from the rookie, as that'll bring out the other rookie, Eliezer Alfonso, who's had a very good start to this game as he grounds this one. This could score a run if not for a double play. The second baseman just gets the out at first, so it does score a run. An RBI ground out for Eliezer Alfonso, and it's now 3 0. That'll bring up Andres Jimenez with Ramiro on second and two away. Jimenez hits this one into left field. That one will drop for extra bases. Ramiro will score, and the Guardians now lead 4 0. Cleveland's hitting the ball well in this inning. They're not heading for a ton of power, but they're getting base runners, and they've been clutch with runners on. As that'll bring up Cattell Marte, who's about as clutch as anybody on the roster. Singles that one up the middle. Jimenez will score, and the Guardians now lead 5 to nothing, scoring four runs here in the fourth inning. And that's enough for Aaron Daco to be taken out of the game. He'll be replaced by Kyle Wonderspoon, who has not had a wonderful season with a 6.58 ERA as he faces off against Jesus Sanchez, who strikes out. Still a good inning. Cleveland scores four in the fourth, and they lead 5 nothing. We'll see if Tristan McKenzie even needs all that run support with how well he's pitching. As Ali Booker grounded to short. Another ridiculous defensive play by Marte, but they say he was safe, although that was very close. Not really going to matter as with two away. Mountcastle's going to fly this one into right, and it is caught by Franville Reyes. 5 0 through 4. Cleveland looks really good as we move on to the fifth. Jose Ramirez hitting from the right side of the plate now, and he still strikes out. Ramirez had that sick defensive play, but offensively it's been tough sliding. He's 0 for 3 with a trio of Ks. That'll bring up Fran Mill Reyes. He draws his second walk of the game. So Cleveland is a runner on base here for Ramon Ramirez, the lefty killer. And he is not going to kill any lefties on that play. Swings and misses at the low changeup. Good inning for Wonderspoon. We go to the bottom half of the inning. Adley Rutschman leads off for Baltimore. He strikes out on the four-seamer. The Orioles just have no answer for McKenzie right now as Drew Waters is going to draw a walk with one away. So maybe they can finally do some damage. There you go. Another hit in a left field. Waters is going to be aggressive. Heads to third. The throw from Valera is not in time. So runners on the corners now after the base hit. Big opportunity here with one away for Kelvin Gutierrez, who strikes out on the 12-6 curve. Good pitch by McKenzie. He gets Gutierrez. He can't get Taron Vavra, however, who draws a walk. So now the bases are loaded for Ali Booker. Grounds it to Bell. He's going to flip it over to McKenzie. Five scoreless for Tristan McKenzie as the Orioles leave the bases loaded. 
We'll see if Cleveland can hold on here down the stretch of this ball game to get the victory as we move on to the sixth inning. Eliezer Alfonso, the switch hitter, is up hitting from the right side of the plate, and he singles into center. So Alfonso now has base hits from both sides of the dish today. And with one away, Alfonso is aboard. That'll bring up the pinch hitter, Elliot Ramos, who hits this one nicely into the gap. Big at bat for Ramos. It'll be an RBI double as Alfonso scores with no problem. Big hit for Ramos, and Cleveland now is up 6-0 as they continue to play really well against, albeit one of the worst teams in baseball. Cattell Marte draws a walk on the inside fastball as Cleveland continues to get plenty of base runners. Jesus Sanchez is going to rip this one to first. What a play. Mountcastle scoops it up for a double play. That could have been a base hit. Maybe could have even scored a run. But instead, Baltimore turns two. We go to the bottom half of the inning as Kowser grounds it to third. Yes, Josh Bell is playing at third. I have some explaining to do. Cleveland is mixing and matching with some of their substitutions. So Bell had to play third. And as you can see, that has proven to be a big mistake. He has no clue what he's doing. Both of those plays somehow were ruled base hits when clearly they were horrible errors. I don't know how you call those hits, but whatever. So Cleveland did some more mixing and matching. John Birdie, who can actually play at third base, is now at third. As Mountcastle draws a walk, the bases are now loaded, and McKenzie's taken out of the game, replaced by Nick Sandlin. It's unfortunate for McKenzie, who could have gone longer, but I guess Josh Bell really can't play third. As Sandlin is unable to field that one cleanly, wants to get the out at home, is unsuccessful. That's an earned run against McKenzie, although, again, it's not his fault that base runner got on. Drew Waters strikes out on the four-seam fastball for the first out of the inning, finally. That'll bring up Robert Nurstrom, who grounds this one to second. Birdie will try for the double play for whatever reason, and another run scores, and it's now 6-2. to two. That's another earned run against McKenzie, who, again, does not deserve to have that earned run against his name. As Kelvin Gutierrez strikes out for the second out of the inning, Taron Vavra strikes out as well. So the Orioles leave him loaded, but they score a two in what might have been the most ugliest inning of baseball I've ever seen. But Baltimore's left the bases loaded two innings in a row. They've got to be a little bit more clutch. Matt Foster checks in for the O's here in the seventh. He's had a good year, 3.27 ERA. Not being spectacular, but quite solid as a middle reliever. Josh Bell draws a walk. He reaches base for a third time today. Another very productive day at the plate for Josh Bell. That'll bring up Ramon Ramiro with two away. Pops that one into shallow right. And it is caught by the second baseman, Taryn Vavro. Good inning for Foster. We go to the bottom half of the inning. James Karinchak is in for Cleveland. He's been pitching pretty well over the past month or so. He's gotten his ERA down quite a bit to below four as he strikes out the all-star, Ramon Urias, to end the inning. Still 6-2 going into the eighth. Paul Fry is now in for Baltimore. He's also having a pretty good season. 3.52 ERA as a lefty as he faces off against Manuel Margot, who has checked in at the game. And he makes the most of his pinch-hitting opportunity with a base hit. I say pinch hitting opportunity like he's not an everyday player because he is, but oh well, we're going to roll with it. Cattell Marte is now up with two away. He's going to get another base hit as that one goes into right. So Cleveland has two runners on base here. A big opportunity for the number two hitter, Jesus Sanchez, who hasn't done much of anything since the first inning home run. Sanchez is going to pop this one up to third, should be caught, and it will by Gutierrez. So it remains 6-2. to two. The Cleveland offense has, for the most part, struggled against the Baltimore bullpen as we go to the bottom of the eighth. The all-star, Camilo Duvall, is in for Cleveland. He strikes out Ryan Mountcastle on the slider for the first out of the inning. That'll bring it badly. Rutschman, who goes down on the way inside fastball. What a nasty pitch by Duvall. And then he gets Waters on the slider again. Camilo Duvall strikes out the side, as I said earlier, I think relative to innings pitched. I think he's been the best reliever in baseball this year. It's a four-run game, so there's no need to bring in Emmanuel Classe. Instead, it's Alex Vesia, who will finish off the ninth as Ramiro makes a play to first. And the Cleveland Guardians win it by the final score of 6-2. to two. Overall, a pretty good win. Tristan McKenzie, I thought, pitched very well. Five innings, two earned runs, although neither of those runs were his own fault. I thought Josh Bell maybe could not look horrible at third base, but obviously that was not the case. And it's good that we got the experiment done now because we don't have to worry about messing up in the future and actually costing us a game. The offense was pretty solid, 11 hits, Baltimore with only six hits. Also, shout out to the bullpen. They did a fantastic job as well. Aaron Deco gets the loss. He was honestly really impressive up until the fourth where he kind of fell off. 
and the Baltimore bullpen was, for the most part, pretty good. So we're going to simulate to the trade deadline now, our next five games, three in Baltimore, two in Kansas City, and this is exactly what we needed. We go four and one. Our offense has been on fire, including a 16-5 to win. Uh, Ramon Romero was great. John Birdie drove in six runs. I don't even know if he had six RBIs the entire season going into this game. Ramos and Campusano also drive in runs. And then we win this game 14-11. to George Valera hit for the cycle. Our team had 19 hits compared to the Royals' seven, yet we only won by three. Fred Mel Reyes goes deep twice in this game as well. The Royals drew 10 walks. Now that, that's how they got so many base runners. That was Tristan McKenzie on the mound for us. This was one of McKenzie's bad starts. Again, no consistency with him. Uh, Chris Bubich pitched for the Royals. He was not that much better. So that brings us to the trade deadline. We've made up quite a bit of ground today in the American League Central. We're still a ways away behind the White Sox, but maybe today gave us some optimism that we should look to buy, or maybe we still choose to sell, or maybe we do both. That'll wrap up the video. Hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out.